cold skin warm reception. Hello and welcome to Rotted Review of the Day, and today I am taking a look at the 2017 movie Cold Skin. Uh, I don't know why, I've just been on a little bit of a kick with my Shutter subscription, and uh, this is one of the top entries when I log in, and decided to finally go ahead and give it a whirl. And what I found was that, well, first of all, for such a uh, simple and intimate and under the radar film, this actually had a pretty surprisingly high production value. And uh, the movie wound up really impressing me with the characters and the story that unfolded around them. But to get into more details on that, let's get into the categories. As always, four different categories, each one worth up to 25 points for a total possible score of 100 points. And the plot of this one, I gave a 20 out of 25. This was actually pretty darn impressive, in my opinion. Uh, this followed the unnamed main character, uh, only called in this movie Friend, uh, as opposed to the Fight Club narrator. This uh, guy is escaping his life and seeking out solitude. One gets the idea to read and write a lot. Uh, and uh, he does so by taking a job as a weather recorder. Uh, this is set in uh, just prior to World War I. Uh, newspaper articles are... Uh, indicating that World War One is nigh, <clears throat> and uh, so he takes a uh, a job as a wind speed uh, and and directional recorder, uh, which is essentially just a useless job in the remote uh, the remote frozen island that he will be planted upon. Uh, also on this island is a lighthouse and a lighthouse keeper by the name of Gruner that is a little bit eccentric uh, when friend lands on the shores and sets up shop in his cabin and looks across at the lighthouse and visits it. He sees that it is besieged by all manner of sharp implement. Uh, it is on lockdown and uh, the reasons for that are unknown and Gruner is none too keen on explaining himself. But Friend finds out why in not too long of a time, for as night falls, the island is uh, set upon by all manner of aquatic man-type creatures, uh, very Lovecraftian kind of fish folk. And... Uh, he basically takes up residence with Gruner in the lighthouse, and the story is about them surviving through the year. It will be 12 months before a ship comes to relieve and restock for Friend. Uh, this is not within any shipping lanes, and uh, they are pretty much on their own. Uh, and that's pretty much uh, how it goes there. We get introduced to a character that... Uh, Honestly, I think really sold the movie for me uh, because as it stands, the movie is fairly simple on its face. Uh, but we get introduced to the character of Anaris, who is a female, uh, one of the aquatic creatures that Gruner had uh, apparently rescued as an, uh, a juvenile and domesticated and all the implications that that would entail for a lonely man in a lighthouse. Um, and by doing so and having the Anaris character within here that uh, Friend uh, uh, sees and distrusts and uh, interacts with, and you know, over the course of the year, the relationship between the three, uh, it, it really created a lot of moral subtleties and complexities that this very simplistic storyline, it really, really drove it uh, to places that I wasn't expecting and uh, kept it very interesting and very fresh and I, I think really, really made the movie for me. If we didn't have this character of Anaris in here and it was just these two uh, nightly fighting plagues of fish folk, it would have been significantly less interesting. But as it was, I thought with all the avenues that the plot explored that it was absolutely worth every point of the 20 that I gave it. Uh, the intent I gave a 17 out of 25. Uh, I was very interested in the story being told, and I was very invested in the characters. All of that worked pretty well, 
and I think that that was a significant chunk of what they were going for, but they were also going for some pretty good jump scares in here, and I will say that uh, I don't know if it was the editing or what. Usually with jump scares, we are talking about editing since that is very, very precise timing and sound design and so forth that make that work. Regardless, I don't think a single one of them actually landed for me as a scare. Uh, so it didn't detract from the movie, but I really think that they were going for a bit more uh, edge-of-my-seat horror than I wound up having. As it was, I just had a really good character-driven storyline. And the acting, I gave a 21 out of 25. Uh, the acting in this one was very startlingly rich, and it honestly sold the movie. Not only having the well-written dialogue and the well-written characters, but having the actors deliver on the performances... Uh, this movie would have absolutely flopped hard for me if it hadn't been for the acting jobs uh, done within. The, it was such a core, uh, central part of the movie that it was imperative that this is a portion of it that they get right. Uh, Ray Stevenson as Gruner did a really great job. David Oakes as the friend uh, really, really fit the shoes of the protagonist well. Uh, the narrator-ish uh, I, I think that it, it would have been not necessarily the most challenging role, but it also would have been one that would have been easy to get wrong, and I feel like David Oakes actually sold it for me. But the real standout was Ara Garrido as Aeneris. The silent performance of uh, her character as one of uh, these fish folks that have been domesticated, but at the same time longing for the fjords. Uh, she really, really did a great job of body acting and uh, really selling the emotions of what her character is going through at any given point within the 12 month time span of this film. And uh, I was just really, really deeply impressed with how well she sold the Inaris character without saying a single word. Uh, the technical I gave a 19 out of 25. Uh, this was made for about eight and a half million euros, which is about 9.7 million US dollars. And they actually accomplished a whole lot for this amount of money. There were a lot of creature effects, a lot of body effects, a lot of CG. Uh, the setting itself, I imagine, couldn't have been easy to work in and set up. Uh, there was just a whole lot here, uh, being a period piece, being set on a remote island, being uh, involved with hundreds and hundreds of creatures, uh, and having startling sequences that I really think that the fact that they had a budget, I mean, not that I would throw away $10 million, but uh, it still is a low amount for what they actually presented on the screen, and I was very impressed with what they were able to accomplish on a technical level especially given the budget that they had. So all told, I was really impressed with this one. That gives us a total score of 77 out of 100 points. Um, I would absolutely recommend this movie. This is not an edge-of-your-seat thriller or uh, total gore-fest horror movie. Uh, it's, def it's not the best movie in the world either, but it still was a very surprisingly good one. And it had interesting characters, interesting narration, and good moral questions and uh, so forth that uh, I, I think it, it made it worth a watch. And uh, the only other thing that I'll comment on, spoiler free, uh, but the ending for me, it made sense within the context of the storyline, but it still felt a little bit deflating for the hero's journey kind of level there. But uh, regardless, that's just that's my five mile uh, opinion on the edit uh, on the ending there without giving a whole lot of spoilers. Uh, but regardless, despite that, I did think that this was worth watching and I would recommend it. And that is my review for 2017's Cold Skin. Really thank you for joining me here today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. If you like these videos, please click like and or subscribe. If you want to support me further, my Patreon link is in the details below. Other than that, next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted.